What's going on guys? Welcome to the channel. Thank you for coming along. My name is Ryan Roma Christian. If you're new here, I do a lot of content like talking about video games, conversations, discussions, lists, things of that nature. So if that sounds like fun, I think you're totally in the right place. So let's get started talking about some new games coming out in 2021. I haven't really made a video talking about gaming since E3. So now we have more release dates, you know what I mean? Like more games coming out in the fall. There are still many games we're not sure if we're gonna get this year tentatively coming in 2021. I'm not gonna include those. I decided to make this a top 10 list of upcoming games that have actual release dates. Obviously, I'd like to think that everything is subject to change these days with delays being natural, but I hope not. I'm really excited for these games. All right, so um, let's kind of just dive right in and start talking about them. We are going to look at them in release date order. First up coming out in August the 19th is 12 Minutes. This is a game that I'm really looking forward to playing on my Xbox. I love that it's going to be on Game Pass. I like a really good story-driven game. I mean, that's kind of one of the things that I love the most about how games have grown to be so narrative-driven these days, and 12 Minutes looks really interesting. It's a thriller. I'm really excited to see um, this story unfold about what's really happening. Uh, it seems to be a tightness story of a couple in a, an apartment and something happened, someone's murdered and you know, we have a time loop here where things keep getting reset. I think it should be really cool seeing this guy sort of uh, having to convince his, uh, his partner. He's in a time loop, I guess, trying to make sense of it all. Unraveling the mystery, it looks very atmospheric and very intriguing. I'm super excited to play 12 Minutes. Also releasing in August is Kana, Bridge of Spirits. This is a PS5 game. I, I think it was supposed to be out a few months ago by now. You know, it's okay that it got delayed because Kana, Bridge of Spirits coming out in August, looking beautiful, looking ambitious. I have like a very, very strongly optimistic feeling that Kana is gonna be a real good reason to have a PS5. I think it looks awesome. Beautiful graphics, very, uh, I guess it's been compared to looking like a film from like DreamWorks or Pixar, you know. It looks like a pretty cool sort of open world, uh, open environment action adventure game, probably some puzzle solving in there. The combat looks pretty inspired. I think it looks just very polished. I'm, you know, a little unsure about how I feel that it is also coming to PS4. No disrespect, but I have a PS5. I recently played Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart and like, I think it's time that we get PS5 exclusives. And then finally, coming out in September, I hope it doesn't get delayed again, is Deathloop, the new Arcane game. Yeah, it's been delayed a few times. I thought right from the start, it looked very cool. I see a lot of ambition in the uh, time loop story with the two assassins that are rivals and both always try to kill each other. I think it's gonna probably tell a pretty interesting story. It should be cool to see the dynamic between these characters, both of which seem like pretty interesting and fleshed out from what we can tell in trailers and whatnot. Deathloop has a really cool like style to it. I love the vibes. Combat is looking really exciting and it's an arcane game. So like, of course it is, you know, they make really good shooters with a lot of cool um, movement and abilities and stuff. Deathloop has been on my radar ever since it was announced. So I'm stoked to play it. And it also, you know, speaking of PlayStation 5 exclusives or the lack of them, you know, Deathloop is a PS5 exclusive and it's on PC as well. But I'm saying like, this is a next gen current gen game. So yeah, it should be, should be really good. From one game that has been delayed to another is Far Cry 6. I am super, super excited to play more Far Cry. The franchise is one of my favorites. Uh, I played the hell out of the last couple and Six looks really promising. I like that it's going to its absurdity, but still having the grounded realism in its narrative about a dictator and uh, stuff like that, political drama in there. I feel like it's going to be really good. Like, like I think they're showing a lot of promise narratively. I feel like we're gonna get a very film-like story. The antagonist seems really, really interesting. We've got great talent in there. I think Far Cry 6 is going to give us a really, really interesting story and a really cool open world. The combat looks fun. It looks like Far Cry. Like, I don't expect them to sort of uh, reinvent the wheel with the gameplay. I mean, 5 definitely had some changes. Nevertheless, like, Far Cry is just, it's well established to be a fun game. It's an enjoyable time. It's crazy sometimes and over the top and the guns look sick the world looks beautiful like i said story seems insanely promising 
So I hope it really delivers. But I mean, from what I can tell, it looks like it's going to be great. And it's finally coming out in October. And one day after Far Cry 6, we're getting the Nintendo Switch OLED model, which I don't really know that I care too much about. But it's releasing alongside a Nintendo Switch exclusive, which I do care about. The new Metroid game. It's very cool that we're getting a 2D Metroid. Dread looks very promising. Uh, I really liked that reveal trailer. The gameplay looks super fun. I mean, I've dabbled in Metroid. Like, I've played a little bit of some of the older ones, but not a lot. So, like, I'm really excited to actually play this. And I will. Like, I'm 100% going to play Metroid Dread this October. Looks cool. I think it's really nice to have a return to form for that franchise. Metroid Prime 4, I guess, is just a ways off. Yeah, no, I mean, Metroid Dread looks good. It looks really polished. And uh, I think it's going to be a nice killer app this this fall. Another October game here is Back for Blood. I am looking forward to playing this with a couple of my friends. It's definitely a co-op experience. Like if I didn't have friends who were interested, I wouldn't really be as excited because like I don't play a lot of co-op and multiplayer games as much. But Back for Blood's looking like a hell of a good time. Don't have a lot of nostalgia for Left 4 Dead. Like I just didn't even have an Xbox 360, if I'm being honest. But uh, I know like this is inspired by that. It's a spiritual successor, so to speak. So Turner Rocks here with Back for Blood. Combat looks great. What do you expect? It's a shooter killing a bunch of zombies, like a ton of zombies. I feel like because we're on the current gen of consoles with the solid state drives and better performance overall, it'll probably be even better to be ripping through zombies. It's going to be a fun cooperative experience. I, I'm i surprised how excited I am. Like I've been looking forward to playing this since we're around the spring again. I feel like half this list is games that were delayed from the spring. But yeah, Back for Blood is coming out in October. It's going to be a good time. I'm just looking forward to killing a bunch of zombies and having a blast online. Ironically, another multiplayer game is coming out in October that I'm excited for, and that's the new Battlefield. So Battlefield 2042, I was really impressed by it showing the scale of the game. Like, it's pretty epic. I'm super excited to see this futuristic uh, world with just an all-out war. Like I said, the scale is absurd. I mean, I know Battlefield's always kind of push the limits, like, to be big and crazy. And I'm super excited to see 2042. There's so much going on. An all-out war sounds pretty fun to me. It's going to be on, obviously, like the current gen of consoles and the last ones, but I read that you can get a lot more players in the game on PS5 and Series X, naturally. I have both consoles, so it's going to be fun. It's another one that, like, I have friends who are also looking forward to playing it, so because of that, it's going to be, like, that online social experience, which I've had for the last several months with Cold War. Uh, I think the Battlefield 2042 shows a lot of promise. The only thing that kind of bothers me as a single player, guys, there's no story, no campaign. Campaign, but oh well, what are you gonna do? Another game coming out in October, yeah, I'm gonna go broke in October, is the new Guardians of the Galaxy game, which is single player, story driven, no microtransactions, no co op or multiplayer even. Like, it's kind of all me. I mean, ironically, I have to talk about a few multiplayer experiences. I'm sitting here telling you how much I want to play a single player only game, but Marvel's Avengers just had a lot of flaws and it kind of burned me. But Guardians, I think it looks good. Like, yeah, okay. When we first saw the trailer and the gameplay demo and stuff, graphics and animations looked a little off. Not that they look bad by any stretch of the word, but like, they just don't look as good as some of the other games that we've gotten recently. But regardless, like, it looks good enough. You know what I mean? Like, combat looks fun. I think the gameplay is going to be a good time playing a Star Lord and uh, using the other teammates, you know, Rocket and Gamora and whoever, to uh, help you out in the, in the action and traveling planets and sort of uh, looks like it's going to be a pretty large scale game to do some adventuring and stuff. I like the narrative decisions. I think that that's really, really a big move to let us make narrative decisions that will have major effects. Like I hope it really, I hope they're not just like playing us. Like let's hope it's actually like legit. We could have completely different endings than our friends, you know, we'll see what happens with that. I think Guardian shows a lot of promise. It's got good vibes. The music, the, the voice acting, the, uh, the the action and everything looks like what I kind of expect or what I want out of a game based on these characters that obviously I only know from the MCU. But if I'm going by comparing it to the James Gunn films, I, I feel like we're getting a similar kind of vibe to it. And I'm all about it. Coming right to Game Pass Day and Day, which I always love to hear, is the new Forza. I mean, that blew me away, D3. Like, I, okay, Forza Horizon 4 is already gorgeous. And it's an Xbox One game from 2018, but if you play it on your Series X, like it's mind blowing how good it is. But uh, yeah, it just looks nice. Like it just looks really good. The graphics are top of the line. They do such a ma an amazing job with the world and the cars and everything. Like literally beautiful environments in Mexico here in Forza Horizon 5. There's like that whole creative mode, which I showed at the end, which also looks super fun. Tons of cars just driving around here. We've got a good looking world 
with dynamic systems in the environment and weather and everything. And like I said, it looks beautiful. Like, I don't know how much more I could talk about Forza because like, all right, I'm not a big car guy, so I don't have like the uh, the input to say like, oh yeah, I'm an, uh, I like this model or I want to drive these cars. Like that looks so good. It looks like it does in real life. Long story short, it's just a gorgeous game. Playground Games has killed it always with Forza Horizon. I like it more than Forza Motorsport too. I think it's just more fun personally, but maybe that's just because I'm not the type to look for that realistic sim, you know? All right, and then last but not least, uh, based on the games that we have release dates for at the time of recording coming out this year, is Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remakes, really in Diamond and Shining Pearl. Something that I've been anticipating before it was ever a thing. Like naturally you knew this was next after they remade Gen 1, 2, and 3. And like, I have more nostalgia for 4 than I do for the previous ones because I really just dove into Pokemon in 2007 with Diamond. Played it multiple times. I've played Platinum a couple times. Like I've just, I've grown to love the Sinnoh region and the characters, the gym leaders, Team Galactic, all of those awesome evolutions that they added to older Pokemon. You know, like that whole section of the Pokedex with like Electivire, Magmortar, Rhyperior, Tangrowth, and so forth. Like, it's so cool that they did that. I really like Giratina, Dialga, and Palkia, and Arceus. There's just so many cool things. Like, in Sinnoh, like, yeah, Diamond and Pearl are slow, but I mean, I can get past that, you know, my rose tinted goggles on. But I'm um, looking forward to seeing just how well they do. I hope that they do make things pace a little bit better. I gotta imagine they're gonna get rid of some of the old stuff that just didn't age well or was replacing newer generations, you know what I mean? Like, I don't really know that Bidoof being an HM slave would feel right in 2021. You know, we've moved past that. Diamond and Pearl remakes look good. Okay, like Legends Arceus obviously looks better. It's very ambitious, but it's like not a regular Pokemon game anyway. This is just another new Pokemon game. I've kind of been craving something like this. And obviously, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, we get the best of both worlds. You know, it's a remake of my favorite Pokemon games and it's a brand new game and it looks good. Like I like the way it looks, the visuals and everything, you know? Looks kind of cute. Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl dropping this November for the Switch. I'm 100% going to be playing that. i probably going to go with Diamond just because Dialga, I think, is one of the coolest legendary Pokemon ever. The Paul is pretty awesome too. Yeah, so I'm just looking forward to going back into the Santa region and just like, you know, reliving my favorite moments from when I was a kid, except now looking way better on a better system, you know? I guess that's gonna wrap it up for me today, guys, because there are not really a lot of games that I'm personally overly excited for that have release dates. Yeah, like a lot of them just don't have release dates. A bunch of games, you know, you look up like 2021, maybe. Though the caveat, right? This year we've had a couple good games. You know, we're still gonna get more. Like obviously I'll make another video down the road or multiple videos talking about excitement for games this year when we get more release dates. But those are my top 10. It just decided to go in release date order. Figured, you know, I'll just have a casual conversation here. Let me know in the comments below though. Are you excited for the games that I am? for the remainder of this year. What are you looking forward to the most for games that are coming out in 2021? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. If you wanna subscribe and see some more content like this, that would be awesome. Ring the notification bell so you don't miss a video. Let me know what you guys wanna talk about gaming. I mean, I'm looking for some new ideas. I want some fresh content. I've been on a little bit of a hiatus, but I'm back here. Hopefully I'll be continuing the content grind. So yeah, no, that's gonna be it. Thanks for watching guys. I appreciate your time here, like in all honesty. Uh, like it if you enjoyed this video, that would help me. And yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys all in the next video.